Hey you, it's Covert Go2, and today we're reviewing Cons of Tarkir, which just launched on MTG Arena. We are not going to spend a lot of time on the commons, as for most of them, the review would simply be, hey, I read this card and it gets played in limited. But there is a big exception known as Treasure Cruise. This is a common that is going to end up in all kinds of decks that like to fill your graveyard. This is seven in blue, but not really. Sorcery common, Delve. And Delve means you exile cards from your graveyard it, to help pay the casting cost draw three cards so put some cards in your graveyard delve up to seven so for one blue you too can have a draw three an ancestral recall this card is actually so much better than that it's banned in older formats and because of some fetch lands we're going to find later in this format it is likely to see play both in timeless historic I don't think it's banned in Historic, it, but it might see play in Historic because of decks like Phoenix. And uh, yeah, uh, Explorer, I believe it's still legal in Explorer, but definitely, definitely Historic Brawl. I will find some good places for a Treasure Cruise. So that's going to be the common we're going to review. Now look, we're going to quickly glance at Uncommons and see if any of these shiny Uncommons need to be reviewed. Stubborn Denial is one of the better ones. So Stubborn Denial is one blue to counter a non-creature spell unless its controller pays one. No big deal. But if you control a creature of power four or greater, you counter that spell instead. You should be looking in Historic Brawl at every deck where your commander is four power or greater, or you have enough four power cards. This will probably also see some play in various decks among a number of formats. But Stubborn Denial, important little inclusion in Arena, a good little counter effect. It's going to do pretty well. I'm going to use it in a number of decks. Of course, another cheap counter spell. Another card with Delve. Uh, Delve will continue to be a theme of this particular set. Delve is a very good mechanic. Murderous Cut can often be one black instant speed destroy target creature, which is below rate and will probably see play in any deck that also likes to fill its graveyard. Rusko, I will probably be running Murderous Cut just as one example. What else do we have here? Hordling Outburst. Uh, I think I'm going to run this in Narset, the four mana one that gives all your creatures prowess. There will probably be goblin decks and things like that that are going to love Hordling Outburst. It's not normal all the time these days to have one red, red, red create three creatures. And these are goblins. I hate goblins, but there are a lot of decks that like goblins. So it will probably see some play in some way. Any other cards standing out here? I, I, I have... I have nightmares of become immense. How do I discuss become immense? This is a delve, so it's often one green for a plus six plus six instant speed until end of turn. Why does this give me nightmares? This card was like Ember Cleave before Ember Cleave, because there was a deck called a Tarka Red in the format when Cons was in standard that would combine become immense and teamer battle rage, which would then give trample and double strike. So Become Immense in current format, like I'm not sure it will see any like timeless type play, probably not. In Historic Brawl, I think that you can see this in Silvala. That is a, that's the place where I think I want this the most because you can just make so much mana with your Silvala if you have a Become Immense effect. Anybody else wanna stand up and be noticed right now so i'm going to cover the charms in general uh jeskai charm being my favorite from the old standard but these charms are all here they have three different modes none of them i would say are rate playable for historic or timeless but uh, for historic brawl they make omnath good the five color omnath from march of the machine so there's all that already gives a little boost to a historic brawl deck god i love reviewing cards for historic brawl do you know why because so many more things are playable in Commander and Historic Brawl than are in 60 card formats. That's why. Instead of looking at every single card and telling you why it sucks, I can tell you that there are uses for some of them in Historic Brawl. It's very fun and it makes you feel smart. It makes you feel so smarty. Anybody else from the uncommon spot that's really, really good? Probably not. Uh, I mean, Swift Spear we've had. This would have been its arrival on Arena, if not the printing in Brothers War. Um, Abzan Charm, of course, gives me all kinds of feels about back in the day of Abzan being amazing. 
And uh, I don't know if we're gonna get morph creatures, but secret plans, I guess, is good for morph creatures. Anyway, we're gonna move into the rares. The rares. Some, all right, chat wants the Trilance. Do you need me to say words about Trilance? I'll say words about Trilance because people seem excited about Trilance. Here's where they go. There were some right here. Such as Mystic Monastery. So there's a cycle. In Khan's the Tarkir, it's the enemy color shards. No, shards are Alara. Enemy color wedges. I just want to call them clans because it's clans of Tarkir. Um, so anyway, we've got all these lands that produce the enemy colored tri wedges, like Mystic Monastery. My opinion of these cards is that they are terrible. I would not craft them. You will probably open some of them if you get packs. I would not run these in anything. It's like a tapped land that can produce a mana of any color isn't very appealing to me. I don't like these cards. I wouldn't run them in, in Historic Brawl. Some people will. That's fine. I might change my mind. In Commander, I do not run these in any decks, like ever throw money at my mana base and it's fine I, do, I i try very hard not to run these i think tapped one mana of any color isn't good enough for formats where you need to go fast which is basically all of the historic and uh, timeless formats at this point so there i said some words on those chat's going to be sag triomes are also very strict upgrades that is very true all right let's go into rares Rares and mythics. Oh, baby. Oh, my gosh. I'm just immediately, immediately feeling feels looking at these cards. So I didn't play Cons of Tarkir standard. Well, I did, actually. I did for a very brief period of time. It was one of the times I bought back into Magic, played for a few months, then sold out again. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Those those kind of like pump fakes. Like, Am I a Magic player? Nope, nope, I'm not. Um but I did watch Magic. Like I watched all the Star City and Pro events during this time. Every weekend I had some Magic on and I was goofing around with like duels of the Planeswalkers and such. Uh, really love it. Um, so a lot of these cards I've, I've seen, I've heard their names many a time. I'm excited to talk about them. Herald of Anafenza is one white for a one, two human soldier with Outlast, two and a white. Now Outlast means you pay the cost. You put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature. I guess. Yeah, it's a very kind of straightforward ability. Not very exciting, just a way to put counters on your stuff. But whenever you activate this card's Outlast ability, you make a 1-1 one, one white warrior token. Very good limited card. Um, it is a soldier. It reminds me of the current hit card out of Ixalan, Warden of the Inner Sky. But this one, of course, costs mana. So not great. Um, I would say don't craft this unless you're going to play a soldier deck. As you see, I already opened four. Haha, <laughs> so lucky. Um, but yeah, activated sorcery speed makes Outlast a lot worse. And maybe your soldier deck could use one of these. Master of Pearls, one and a white for a 2-2 two, two morph. Okay, we do have morphs. I forgot we actually do have morphs in the set. So yeah, those uh, face down creatures are gonna happen. Excited to see how this looks on Arena. I don't think we've had morph before. Chat will correct me if I'm wrong. I certainly haven't played it. Anyway, you can play it face down for three generic mana as a 2-2, two, two, a face down 2-2. Two, two. And then you can pay the morph cost on the front of the card at some point to turn it face up at instant speed. So you pay five mana to turn this face up. And when it's turned face up, creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. It's a very good limited card. I do not think that this is a very good card. I would not craft. High Sentinels of Arashin is three and a white, three, four flying bird soldier. It's another soldier for you soldier gamers. It gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with a counter on it. Yay, counters. So yeah, there's some historic brawl applications for this. It's a uh, junk rare outside of that. And I think there are enough cards, honestly, out there, both in soldiers and in plus one, plus one counter decks that you don't need this. Not a fan of the high sentinels. End hostilities was the board clear of the set. Oh, how things have changed. Three white, white sorcery. Destroy all creatures and all permanents attached to creatures. So that would include equipment and auras. Sometimes you just want to get them. Sometimes you've had enough. And you need to end hostilities. 
I don't think this will actually see play, but I mean, it is a little value add if an equipment deck or an aura deck ever really pops off. Not that blowing up auras matters that much. Uh, was this about totem armor? Like if you blow up the totem armor, does it still save the creature? Judge, I, I honestly don't know. Now here was a standard banger that I don't know if this is ever gonna be a standard banger again. Um, Wingmate Rock, three white, white, three, four flying bard raid when it enters the battlefield if you attacked create a three four white bird token with flying whenever wingmate rock attacks you gain one life for each attacking creature yeah that's right five mana for two three fours that was the jam i don't think that this is worth crafting or will particularly see play i'm not sure what i would even put it in i think that this is an outdated card but it gives me the memories it really gives me the vibes people are yorian <laughs> yorian is a better bird that is for sure <laughs> yeah blink it look at my three fours i no no i think i think it's time has come Clever Impersonator, I believe, was already on Arena, so I don't think we need to review it, but it is an interesting clone that can enter as a copy of any non-land permanent. Kheru, Spell Snatcher. Three and a blue. Why does this look like an alchemy card to me? The art just looks like a completely different style of art. Anyway, three and a blue, three, three, Naga Wizard. Rare, morph, six mana. When it's turned face up, counter target spell. If the spell is countered, exile it. You may cast it. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not gonna play the morphs in standard, but that is a pretty wild card. Thank you, Waffle Toasters, for the prime. Appreciate you. Thousand Winds is for blue blue for an elemental five six. Uh, a flying with morph when it's turned face up, return all other tap creatures to owner's hands. I'm telling you, somebody might try a morph deck. I will probably not. When I see morph, unless it's a, there, there might be one or two cards. But for the most part, Morph is going to mean limited to me. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's see if this is still... Let's see if this still reads as good in 2023. Because back in the day, we called this the Win Con. Five blue blue, six seven, Leviathan Mythic, Pearl Lake Ancient, Flash. Can't be countered. The original Hullbreaker Horror. Prowess, just in case it needed to be bigger. Ability. Return three lands you control to their owner's hand. Return this to its owner's hand. <laughs> God, it's... Oh, God. Reading this now seems so bad. <laughs> uh, Nezahal. Nezahal's better. Hullbreaker Horror is obviously better. Unnerfed Hullbreaker Horror. I, I can't imagine ever playing this. Ever ever again and that makes me sad because <laughs> this is this this was the way this was the way repeatable landfall sure i'll play it in tatiova you guys this is why historic brawl is great everything gets a home even when it sucks tatiova now we can bounce three lands and get three more draw triggers easy Ever heard of this card? It's called Dig Through Time. It is six blue, blue delve instant. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two in your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. It's the card that like memory deluge and whatever the one from the new set is, something far sight, something uh, drown in dreams. All these cards have tried to recapture just a little bit of the magic that is dig through time. Dig through time is amazing. And once again, delve really easy to activate with fetch lands. So it's going to go in a number of decks, both in 60 card formats and in singleton. And I am so happy that dig through time is on MTG arena. I'm going to be casting it all of the time. It's going to be very, very, very fun. You end up playing both. It's true. You, you can have treasure cruise and dig through time and just go zipping through your deck. What generally happened in standard treasure cruise was for some of the faster decks and dig through time would be more of a control card but you can run both it is very cool to run both icy blast goes in uh hilda 
the Ice Queen deck. And it's good and limited. That's about it. Blood Soak Champion. One black for a 2-1 human warrior at rare. It can't block. And it has raid, one and a red, to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. So, in black, one mana two ones that can come back have kind of a history. It just keeps happening. It's blood ghast. It's various other types of uh, gutter bones. This is a good one. This will be in a number of decks across several formats. It's an excellent Savannah Lion uh, for those looking for a one mana two one. And it will go in a number of historic brawl decks like Yawgmoth as well. Bloodsoak Champion will be an easy craft if you have an aggressive black deck or a sacrifice deck. Enjoy. It returns untapped, that is true, but then it can't block, so thank you for pointing that out. Retribution of the Ancients is one black for an enchantment rare, and for a black, remove X counters from creatures to give target creature minus X minus X until end of turn. I think that this is a limited card that was put in the set to combine well with Outlast in the Mardu type. Um... I'm not excited about it. I can't think of good spots for it. It is good with uh, undying creatures, but I think we only have like one card with undying and it has to be activated. So I don't think Retribution of the Ancients is going to have a lot of play at this point. Grim Harrow Specs. Hey, we found one of the morph cards to be excited about. Two and a black for a 3-2 human wizard with morph for only one black. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. This card is good. It's Midnight Reaper. It doesn't, unless uh, it's, it itself dies. And it doesn't cost you a life. So this will definitely see play in decks the likes of Yawgmoth or other sacrifice-themed uh, decks. So this is one of the morph cards that you might actually see get played. Though most of the time playing it just straight up as a 3-mana three 3-2 three, will make more sense than playing it as a face-down morph. Unless you have nothing else to do with the one extra mana. And you like seeing your opponent be like, oh, what's that? Necropolis Fiend. <laughs> Seven black black demon. Delve. Four five flying. X and a tap, XL, X cards from your graveyard target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. I never saw this in Constructed. I think it's a limited bomb. Obviously, it doesn't protect itself. Nowadays, if they made this card, it would have ward all over itself. So, um, I am guessing this is just for limited, but if you like big expensive demons for a reason, maybe you want to play it in that Kalia deck. I, I wouldn't do what you got to do. <laughs> Empty the pits. X, X, black, 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 instant, mythic, delve, create X, tapped, 2-2, two, two, black, zombie creature tokens. Early on in the format, this was a standard card. Um, It is an instant, so it's kind of wild if you have a thick, and I mean a thick graveyard to be able to delve this and just make a whole bunch of zombies and win the game. I am trying... <laughs> Chat says six mana for a 2-2. Two -two. The whole point of delve is you never pay the X, all right? You pay it out of the graveyard. So it's like four mana, but then you exile like two cards and you get a zombie. If you exile four cards, you get two zombies. If you exile six cards, you get three zombies, etc. I mean... There might be a deck for this, but I am very skeptical. I'm very skeptical that there's a deck that's good enough at filling its graveyard that you then want to delve into the pits. The cost is just a tad too high, but it is a real card. Somebody's going to do something with it. Go forth, crush, kill, win. Jeering Instigator, one and a red, two, one. Goblin Rogue at rare, morph is two and a red. When Instigator is turned face up, if it's your turn, gain control of another creature. So, Act of Treason, Onomorph, as a goblin. It is a goblin. A goblin might see some play in some goblin-themed decks. But I'm not excited about it. Not for me. Howl of the Horde. Two and a red sorcery. When you cast your next instant or sorcery this turn, copy it. You may choose new targets. That seems familiar. Raid, if you attacked, when you cast your next instant or sorcery, copy it an additional time. I don't think we need a three mana sorcery speedway to copy stuff in 2023 going into 2024. 
I think that Galvanic Iteration set a new bar for this. I think Howl the Horde is just a junk rares. Ash Cloud Phoenix. Even back then, they had to put a Phoenix in every freaking set. Two red, red, four, one flying Phoenix. It's a morph, I believe. Yeah, it is. When it dies, return to the battlefield face down, morph it for six. When it's turned face up, two damage to each player. Too expensive. Now we, we expect our Phenai for free, okay? Or for one mana. We don't we don't pay this much mana for Phoenix anymore. Dragon style twins is three red red for a three three double strike prowess, the end. God cards were easy to read back then. But it's not good. Sarkon, the dragon speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, a planeswalker in the set. And you know what that means? It can be our commander in Historic Brawl. So let's read this baby. Three and a red, red, four loyalty Sarkin, plus one until end of turn. Becomes a four, four legendary red dragon creature with flying indestructible in haste. Get him. Minus three, four damage to target creature. Pew pew. Minus six, emblem at the beginning of your draw step. Draw two additional cards. And at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Ouchie. Um, this card good. Does ultimate very quickly, especially with a proliferate. And then you, yes, you can discard your hand. <laughs> I would take it, man. Draw three cards a turn, cast them all, then discard your hand. Let's go. I, I still think that's a good ultimate. I, I would take it. Um, I, I have trouble seeing a theme for this, though, uh, as a commander in Historic Brawl. And just as a card, I think it it's a cool card, but I don't think the raid is what it needs to be for 2024 magic. Overall, I would not recommend crafting Sarkin. I might try a historic brawl deck with it, a quick alt historic brawl deck, but I mean, come on, Koth is so Koth is sweeter than that, right? I think it is. So we'll see. I might play with this. I don't recommend that you play with this. Ah, oh, Sarkin. It was good. It was good back in uh, standard too. Crater's Claws. X and red sorcery, X damage to any target. So it's like a fireball. With Ferocious, which means if you control creature power four greater, it does two additional damage. Eh, there might be a home for this, but it's hard to get too excited about another build of fireball. Hardened Scales is already on Arena, but it's here. So if you want original art, Hardened Scales instead of uh, the Eldraine one, then have fun with that. Actually, I think this art was already on Arena too. Now that I think about it, I think it was like a Historic Horizon or something. Rattleclaw Mystic is a Teamer Mana Dork. One and a green, two one, that taps for Teamer. Human Shaman, the morph is two, and when it's turned face up, add Teamer. So what's interesting about this card is for three mana, you can play it face down. On the next turn, say you play your fourth land, you pay two to turn it face up, you add three, and you ramped up to six because it adds green, blue, and red. If you hit your land drop, you have two other mana open, but wait, CGB, that's five. No questions. This no longer has summoning sickness because you summoned it last turn and transforming it doesn't uh, create summoning sickness. So this can tap for your sixth mana. So this is a way to get to six mana on turn four in Teamer, which might make it playable in some deck I'm not sure which one. It's some Somebody out there is thinking of a teamer deck in Historic Brawl. That's it. It was good in Standard. It's definitely outdated now. We, we want our... We, we just don't play two mana mana dorks like this. Trail of Mystery. Ooh, is one in a green for an enchantment rare. Whenever a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may search your library for a basic land and put it into your hand. If this were printed today, it would go on the battlefield 100%, and then it would conjure slash seek another land and put that on the battlefield and put another one into your hand, because that's how cards work now. <laughs> Whenever a permanent you control is turned face up, if it's a creature, it gets plus two, plus two. Ooh, wow, your morphs get thick. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> Meandering Tower Shell is three and a green green for a turtle with Island Walk. It's a 5-9, because why not? 
Whenever this attacks, exile it. <laughs> Return it to the battlefield under your control. Tapped and attacking at the beginning of the declare attacker step on your next turn. So you attack with it and it goes away. But on your next turn in your attack step, it just enters the battlefield attacking. So you're finally punching somebody with your five nine. The slow turtle has a slow, slow turtle. Oh my God. It's a time traveling turtle. I, all right. See the unwritten. Four green green for a mythic sorcery. Reveal the top eight of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest in your graveyard. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you may put two creature cards onto the battlefield instead of one. This is a very strong green card. Uh, a very sneaky green card. Eight cards is a good number if you run enough big creatures in your deck. Um, the Ferocious is really important to getting absolute max value. But just for one, if you hit one big creature, like a Titan of Industry, you ramped. Would you play this in like Kinnon? Might be too unnecessary for Kinnon. Uh, but there are probably some decks you would play this in, like Vorinclex, things of that nature. I don't think it's going to make it in standard, but we'll see. I mean, putting it on the battlefield and casting it are very different. Like maybe you put an Atali on the battlefield and you feel great about that, but like you're not going to cast like an Ulamog. So I think there will be some homes for this. Uh, the Mythweaver Pock. Yeah, for sure. Like that can be played. Uh, this could be played with or over storm the festival we'll see i but it's an interesting card to take note of it's gonna see some historic brawl play i don't think it makes it in 60. hooded hydra there also had to be a hydra in every single set that was just the way x green green zero zero snake hydra mythic when it enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it when it dies, create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token for each counter on it. It has morph. When it's turned face up, you put five counters on it. It's fine. I can't see it getting, like, it, it, I think it's just a limited card. I wouldn't craft it. I can't see it getting standard play. It's just another big creature without ward in modern times. This would have ward. Planeswalker, which means it can be a commander in Historic Brawl. Sora and Solemn Visitor. Two and a white black for loyalty plus one until your next turn creatures you control get plus one plus oh and lifelink minus two 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 black vampire creature token with flying minus six emblem at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player sacrifices a creature so it's a quick alt commander but it doesn't defend itself if you're playing it and plusing it like it doesn't draw a card and it doesn't like have battlefield presence but that emblem is kind of vicious like they have to figure out how to beat that but it, it only applies to like creature decks i think that this is more of an in the 99 card i don't think it sees play in the 60 card formats i think it's kind of outdated in that way um and yeah it, it might go into some vampire decks i'm not sure what timeless deck would want sword and solemn visitor it seems like a perf and it was a great standard planeswalker but it seems like a very average planeswalker nowadays unfortunately Yes, the dojo is not afraid because we do not play creatures. Utter end. I can't believe this was a card in the day. Four mana, instant, exile target, non-land permanent. That's it. That's the card. Nowadays, we do that for, like, less. I mean, I guess Anguish on Making makes you pay life. Legion to Ashes is sorcery speed. So, it's not exactly completely power crept because this effect just all on its own doesn't get printed very cheap. And maybe you play this in like Kaya just because it is a very good effect and you want a bunch of them. But Utter End, for as good as it was in the day, is pretty power crep nowadays. Mind Swipe. 
X blue red instant counter target spell. I like where this is going. Unless this controller pays X. Oh, mind swipe deals X damage to that spell's controller. It's a win con, guys. It's a counter spell that's a win con. All you need is their life total worth of mana. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I want to play this in standard with my uh, mind splice apparatus. That would be fun. It's definitely too power crap for 60 card timeless formats, but there might be some historic brawl decks. Like, would I run this in Niv? Why not? It's not great, but they could use another counter and maybe it helps you close a game. It's kind of cool. The damage does go through whether the opponent pays the cost or not, right? Because uh, there's a period here and it's counter unless it pays X and then it they take the X damage anyway. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, if I could have a win con that also countered a spell while doing it, of course I would play it. Rakshasha, Death Dealer, Black Green, now a demon, rare 2-2. Black, green, plus two, plus two until end of turn. Black, green, regenerate. Did we have regenerate before? It does, is our regenerate new to arena? Anyway, if your thing's about to die, pay this cost, and then it won't be destroyed by damage or destroy effects. All right, nice. Welcome to arena. This card did get play in standard. It was good in an Abzan aggro deck. I'm not sure i know where it would fit in in current formats though it seems like another card that's going to be good in this limited format but power crept out of the bigger formats as you just don't have mana to put into these things deflecting palm one of commander's greatest win cons red white instant the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn prevent that damage if damage was prevented this way it deals that much damage to the source's controller so every timmy combo that deals 20 damage to your face somehow boom deflecting palm get that out of here there will probably be something sideboard related at some point in some older format because these combos always pop up eventually it's good to know that deflecting palm exists sagu mauler four and a blue and a green for a six six trample hexproof as morph three and a blue and a green again probably limited um Unless you can think of a place where you want the Sagu. It does have X-Proof. X-Proof is good. Crackling Doom. Here was a standard banger. Red, white, black from the Mardu color slice. Instant. Two damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacks a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. Might see some play in Historic Brawl. Hard to picture it seeing much play outside of that as these effects and the mana cost are just not like, it's not the rate it used to be. Mardu Ascendancy. Ah, the Ascendancies. This is our first one. Mardu Cost Enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control attacks, create a 1-1 one, one Goblin token that's tapped and attacking. Sack this to give creatures you control plus O plus 3 until end of turn. Plus O plus 3? So they can survive an Anger of the Gods, I guess? I don't know. Um. Yeah, this was not the best of them not at all i don't know maybe what what does this go well in ishin if somebody out there is still trying to make ishin in historic brawl maybe butcher of the horde this card was also a banger this is going right into kalia i can tell you that uh because it's a demon and it's in the Mardu colors. It's a 5-4 flyer for 4. Sacrifice another creature. This gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Haste until end of turn. This is really fun. This is a really fun uh, Butcher of the Horde. I... When... So, the way that the cons blocks... Not blocks. What are they? Wedges. The way that those played out in Standard, Teamer ended up being pretty bad. Mardu Sultai ended up being okay and actually eventually won worlds. Uh, Mardu was expected to be really good and turned out being okay. Jeskai and Abzan were the big hitters. So in Mardu, like this was the card that was trying to keep up and make the deck as good as like Siege Rhinos and stuff like that. And it did its best. 
I have a soft spot for Butcher of the Horde. It is a free sack outlet if you have a Mardu deck trying to do that, like Extus. Ankle Shanker. Two, it's five mana for a 2-2 two, two haste goblin berserker in Mardu. And whenever it attacks creatures, you control gain first strike and death touch till end of turn. Basically, it makes your stuff only chump blockable. Uh, this is a silly little card. I would not run it. <laughs> but it is so tough and limited. Zergo Helm Master is two plus Mardu, total of five mana in the mardu colors for a legendary orc warrior seven two with haste it's a mythic when it attacks each combat it attacks each combat if able zergo has indestructible as long as it's your turn whenever you whenever a creature dealt damage by zergo this turn dies put a plus one plus one counter on zergo oh my lord what a puncher this could be a commander um <laughs> i don't know i of of the commanders available they just didn't make cards back in the day for commander the way they do now back then as like well uh it's a legendary creature it didn't have to be busted to be a legendary creature like it does with current design we could still try it in Historic Brawl because there aren't that many Mardu commanders. And this one is pretty straightforward game plan. We gonna punch. And that that's about that. Um, it does die to everything. Uh, but not on your turn. You might get you might get a swing in there, baby. In fact, I like this. I like I like what chat's thinking. It's a board wipe commander. You run this and you run all the wraths. <laughs> boom but i have indestructible on my turn so get wrecked depopulate i draw a card all your stuff dies take seven <laughs> okay now i'm vibing we we definitely figured out what to do with this card uh i would not spend a mythic on it if i were not making content i will be clear about that big nux who likes to um you know uh, Savage Knuckle Blade is teamer for a 4-4 Ogre Warrior rare, uh, and it has abilities for two and a green plus two plus two, activate only once each turn, for two and a blue, return it to owner's hand, and for a red, it gains haste until end of turn. Um, this was supposed to be teamer's, like, like bestest card and of course teamer went on to not be a really good color combination standard because having to actually put mana into all these abilities was asking a lot and you can kind of picture that nowadays four mana for a four four haste with an incredibly difficult to cast set of requirements not very good uh so savage knuckle blade i don't know maybe there's a teamer deck that wants to play it it's probably not near it, it it's got a lot of like big teamer energy but i don't think it's very good it is it's kind of a meme before memes but teamer ascendancy on the other hand is a commander all-star uh this is of course a teamer cost enchantment and creatures you control have haste whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control you may draw a card so there's maybe some teamer mutate decks uh in historic brawl that are gonna enjoy having teamer ascendancy this card is so good in commander though like um like along with like rhythm of the wild that offers like uncounterability but the card draw is so so strong it's so strong i really like this card in commander on arena probably just finding just trying to find a home for this in historic brawl oh another teamer absolute banger he said sarcastically trap essence is the teamer color combo for an instant rare counter target creature spell put up to two counters on one target creature so hard to leave up three mana and have a creature and have a good target for this so easy for opponents to play around in a format with disdainful stroke i should add but that this is a card you could open. Avalanche Tusker. Look at this angry elephant. Oh my God, that's coming down a mountain at you. How do you feel? Two and team are five mana for a six, four elephant warrior rare. When it attacks target creature, defending player controls blocks if able. 
so this is coming down a mountain at you and i guess you're just like well i can't get out of the way so i'll stand here and block i guess <laughs> and that's the lore that's the whole lore and this card is a rare you could craft but i would not Ooh, we get a legendary so this could be a commander. It's a mythic Surak Dragon Claw. Back when all legendaries were also mythic. <laughs> Two and a teamer. Five total mana for a 6-6 six, six human warrior. Flash. Can't be countered. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Other creatures you control have trample. Why can't Surak have trample? What is the conspiracy here that a 6-6 six, six can't give itself trample? They've been giving themselves trample since the beginning of time. Anyway anyway do you hate blue are you sick of getting your commander countered in historic brawl i've got a deck for you you can play surak dragon claw and all of your big timmy stuff won't be countered anymore congratulations they'll all die to board wipes instead but we might do it abzan ascendancy is the abzan mana colors for an enchantment that enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control that's fun for some plus one plus one counters synergy. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a one one white spirit creature token with flying. So all your stuff gets counters. When your stuff dies, you get spirits. Nifty, I guess. Can't think of a deck for it though. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Probably not. Limited. Here comes a mythic legendary for you, Anafenza the Foremost. It's uh, Abzan, three mana for a 4-4 legendary human soldier. When it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on another target tapped creature you control. If a non-token creature an opponent owns would die or a creature card not on the battlefield would be put into an opponent's graveyard, exile that card instead. This was a good standard card. Saw so play alongside the likes of Siege Rhino, the rate of three mana for a four four. Still good, kind of holds up today in a lot of ways. The sort of staxy effect of shutting down graveyards in all these ways is interesting. Uh, there might be spots where this is good. I'm not sure, like if you build a historic brawl deck around this, I guess you'll get some plus one, plus one counter synergy and the exile graveyard part becomes gravy, but I'm not sure what else you do with the deck. Maybe it's just like an old school Abzion beatdown deck. Does have human synergy. So nerfs delve kind of, it's only creatures, right? It's if a non-token creature, why does it say non-token? <laughs> uh, exile, it like tokens exile anyway. It seems like it's just, unnecessary uh anyhow uh yeah this is fine it doesn't it, it, re, it nerfs reanimator doesn't really nerf delve because that's usually spell based it hits the graveyard a little bit it's fine this card's okay it was good back in the day uh, i had a lot of nightmares about anafenza we'll probably play it in as a commander just because we can at some point i think that's most of the play it'll see this card was already on arena we probably don't need to talk about it. But we're going to talk about it because it's Siege Rhino. And there was a time when Siege Rhino was the best thing you could possibly do in Standard. And Standard was just Siege Rhinos all the way down. How do you how to identify a magic boomer of this time period? Show them a Siege Rhino and watch their face. If it's like this, They're a magic zoomer and they don't know if it's like this <laughs> then they played magic during this time <laughs> because everything was siege rhino all the time for years years and years and years and it's hard to believe looking at it now because when i look at it now i'm like uh, Yorian, <laughs> but back then just casting it was like, how are they going to beat that? A four or five trample, which enters the battlefield and each opponent loses three life. How are they going to win? The only possible solution is another siege rhino <laughs> because it offsets the life loss 
and then can block the siege rhino because for some reason they're four fives <laughs> so they just run into each other clearly the only answer is more siege rhino and it was it was guys that was the only answer <laughs> But let's talk about the obvious five drop that you play after your Siege Rhino. Ivory Tusk Fortress. For two and an Abzan, five total mana, you got a five seven rare elephant that says untap each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it during each other player's untap step. It's a significant step down in power, I would say. <laughs> I, I, this is a rare you could open. I would not craft it. Jindara, thank you very much for the Prime. And Alex, thank you very much for the Tier 1. Appreciate you guys. Of course, we are live on Twitch. Come follow Twitch. Drop a Twitch Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, it supports the channel at no cost to you. Doom Blast. Beautiful card. A 4 and a white and a black and green. 7 total mana for a sorcery. Choose up to one creature and destroy the rest. So... Is this card actually good? Probably not. Where would I play this card? Abzan Mutate. What is that card? Like Nethroy or something? Maybe there's a Mutate deck where you play this. Ta-da! Now let's talk about this card. Jeskai Ascendancy. <sighs> the good one, as it is known. Blue, a red, a white, enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Untap those creatures. So in its way, all your creatures get prowess and vigilance. But it's kind of a little better than that because you cast a spell and you untap stuff. So if they have tap abilities, you can use them again and again like mana dorks. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card. When you do discard a card, of course, we have to tack that one on there too. So this was a part of combos, uh, combos that won the game immediately by making a bunch of creatures, making them huge and attacking, doing draw discard, untapping mana dorks to make mana, casting non-creature spells over and over. Uh, will it be part of a combo in Timeless? That remains to be seen. Can anybody... Anybody foresee a combo with this card? Of course, the mana requirements requirements are difficult, but you can just see it in decks like uh, Phoenix and things like that, where you just dump your Arclight Phoenixes in the graveyard. You fill up your graveyard for Delve. Like, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. Convoke, uh, some absolutely nutty things that you might do with Convoke spells that exist now. Um, we'll see. But this is a, a dangerous card, and it's going... Like, the combo players out there are going to play with it. For Historic Brawl, there's got to be a deck for it. I think the most obvious one right away is Narset Enlightened Exile, but there are, is another Narset here. And there will be other things, I think, where you want to play this. It is a combo with Emery and Bobble, kind of similar to like Paradox Engine, but cheaper. So that could be a timeless combo. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, there could be some timeless combo going on with this deck with this card specifically. Now let's talk about an absolute standard banger called Mantis Rider. This was the keystone card in the Jeskai deck, which was probably, I think everybody would agree, the best, except maybe outside of Abzan, which everybody actually thought was the best, but blue players always knew in their heart that Jeskai was the best from back in the day. And Mantis Rider was our leader, our, our warrior out front, this Jeskai, three mana, three, three, is a flying, vigilant, haste human monk. That's it. That's the card. Sadly, I don't know where you play this now. Uh, Explorer in five color humans, maybe. Pretty limited range. Not sure what it, where I would play this in Historic Brawl. Not good enough for Timeless. Uh, I, I think every creature that you play in Timeless has to be like one or two mana or something like that. And has to survive Bowmasters. Like, it's going to be a weird format for creatures. Just not a creature format, probably, until a lot of things get banned. But Mantis Rider, uh, good old standard face puncher. I, I like this card. I still try to force this card in Commander. But is it great? Nah. And we go right into, I don't know what it is. Why did every color, it's like a cycle of like rares that are 
pretty much worse than the ones that cost one or two mana less than them. But this is Sage of the Inward Eye, which is two in Jeskai, five total mana for a three, four Jin Wizard with flying. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Limited. Then... <laughs> A good old commander finisher. There was a time where commander wasn't as power crept as it is now, and we use cards like this to win games. Flying crane technique. Three Jeskai, six total mana for an instant. Untap all creatures you control. They gain flying and double strike until end of turn. <laughs> I mean, a great limited finisher. Honestly. Honestly, a great old school commander finisher for those of you who like had to play commander in a world where combos are frowned upon. Uh, silly to have this on arena. I can't imagine this getting any play, but there you go. Limited, watch out for that one. What a banger. Speaking of a banger, Narset Enlightened Master is a six mana, three in a Jeskai, three, two flying hex. Nope, not flying, only looks like flying. 3-2, first strike, hexproof, human monk, mythic. Whenever this attacks, exile the top four cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-creature spells from among these cards without paying their mana cost. This card is a dreaded commander in commander. Therefore, we must try to make some scuff version of a historic brawl deck with it. What do you do with this card? You attack with it. And you have your deck packed full of extra turn spells and extra combat spells. So that when you attack with this, hopefully you hit an extra turn spell and then you get to attack with this and hit another extra turn spell and so on. There aren't enough extra turn spells in Historic Brawl like there are in Commander, I think, to really abuse this card. There are starting to be more extra combats, so hitting more extra combat spells, but there still aren't nearly as many as there are in Commander. So we also need some just big banger spells that can take over the game. Um, River's Rebuke easy you know stuff like that that we can hit with the narset that completely crush our enemies so yeah you can cast any non-creature spells from among the top four that you reveal it doesn't matter the mana cost that is kind of busted you can sneak out an omniscience so yeah we're gonna play this one this one is going to be a historic brawl deck. I think that's about the only place it goes. I'm not convinced it will actually be good. I'm curious if it will be normal Q or if it will go to hell Q. We will find out. All right, last page. Almost done too. Sultai Ascendancy is the Sultai one. For this amount, it's an enchantment rare at the beginning of your upkeep, Surveil 2. So yeah, if you like surveilling a lot, you can play this enchantment that lets you do it every turn. I can't imagine playing this. It, there's got to be better ways to fill your graveyard. There really has to be. Sidisi so Brood Tyrant is one in a Sultai for a 3-3 three, three Naga Shaman Mythic. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. This actually is also a very cool commander. It fills your graveyard for delve, and it is actually a very popular commander from the commander format. So we might have to do some historic brawl with Sidisi, Brood Tyrant. It's one of those cards I always wanted to build around in commander, but never really got around to, as there's always a new shiny card. So yeah, we'll probably try this in historic brawl at some point. That is the only format I'd really play it in. Roxasha Viper. Yep, gotta do the five mana bad card thing. Uh, five mana, four, four demon. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your graveyard, put that many plus one, plus one counters on Roxasha Vizier. Wait a minute. Oh, whenever one or more. Wait, put that many counters. So if you have a big graveyard and you exile your graveyard, this gets huge. Too bad it's not legendary. It might actually be a sweet build around, but it's not. Oh, we got a Kiru Lich Lord, which is Moldrotha cost. Three Sultai, six mana for a 4-4 zombie wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two and a black. 
because we haven't paid enough mana already. If you do, return a creature card at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. <laughs> it gains flying trample and haste. Exile that card at the beginning of your next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it. Oh my god, there's so many things that make this bad. Nowadays, god, what would this be nowadays? Nowadays, it would be like at the end of your turn. It wouldn't cost any mana or something. <laughs> it would trigger on ETB. Uh, yeah, don't craft, don't craft, don't craft. Ah! Epic Commander Win Con. <laughs> Villainous Wealth. Let's go. Okay, we have to play this in Historic Brawl somewhere. X and Sultai. Sorcery. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. You may cast any number of spells with mana value X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Exile their deck. Cast their deck. Need I say more? So yeah. Uh, we're going to build some kind of Saltai decks that just let us cast this for as much X as we can get away with. And maybe we hit their whole deck. Hopefully not, because I would love to just cast a billion spells. This thing can create stacks that are amazing, like Mizzix Mastery with a full graveyard levels of stacks. This card in Historic Brawl is going to make them hit the concede button as fast as humanly possible. They're like going to be, they're going to wish they were holding priority so they could concede faster. But yeah, I'm definitely going to try to find somewhere to play this. It's got to be something that makes a lot of mana, but let's just say green can do that. Yeah, Khans was popular because it had Cons is interesting, right? The limited format had a bunch of like these kind of banger rares that were awesome, but not busted, right? And then it had a bunch of just these absolutely insane cards that people love to cast. Ultra of the Brood. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills a card. This is another combo outlet card. You put this on the battlefield, you create a loop of, I play this, I play that, I play this, I play that. Picture like a Hullbreaker Horror, return the zero, the Ornithopter to play the Mox Amber, play the Mox Amber to return the Ornithopter, and you mill out everybody. Well, not everybody, just your opponents. So yeah, infinite mana combos or just infinite bounce combos, and this becomes your win con. This is great in Emery. Uh, this is now the win con in Emery. Like, you don't have to overthink how you're actually going to win the game in Emery anymore. You can run this, and it's just a little one-mana card. So, yay! We don't need to figure out how to run Aetherflux Reservoir anymore. You can just alter them. Is it a mill staple? I mean, who's trying to mill out the opponent anymore in an eternal format? Probably nobody, but who knows? There might be enough Tasha's hideous laughter in the world eventually. Notably, it's another permanent. That includes lands. So you just play this on turn one, and everything you play for the rest of the game mills your opponent. Watch out, you might make their treasure crews really cheap. Ghostfire Blade actually saw play, and it might see play in Historic Brawl. One mana, equip three. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two. Are you impressed yet? It's equip ability costs two less to activate if it targets a colorless creature. So this is actually really good with Thopters, obviously colorless type decks, but like artifact attack aggro decks, which some do exist. It's one mana for a one mana equip that gives plus two plus two. And that's a little bit better than a lot of the other equipments you can run. So it might actually see some play. Back, <laughs> Dragon Throne of Tarkir. Good old Game of Thrones in Tarkir, huh? Four mana, legendary artifact equipment, equipped creature. It's The throne is an equipment. Since when has a throne been an equipment? Equipped creature has defender. Can't go anywhere. <laughs> and tap with two. Other creatures you control gain trample. They get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is this creature's power. <laughs> Your butt equips the throne. And then when you, how do you tap yourself on a throne? You sit on the throne. You, I guess you just lean it all the way back. <laughs> you recline the throne. <laughs> and somehow all your creatures get ripped. 
and they go to battle. <laughs> All your other creatures, they gain trample. I don't even know. This, this card is weird. We're done talking about it. Now, now we're going to talk about extra turn spells back in the day. Five <laughs> colorless mana legendary artifact, Ugin's Nexus. If a player would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. It's you as well. If Ugin's Nexus would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. So, where do you play this in Historic Brawl? Is there a world for this? I mean, it is extra turn for five mana, in theory, if you have an easy way to sack and get rid of it. Maybe there's even something somewhere in Timeless. Very unlikely. Karn gets it back from exile. Can do that kind of twice if its loyalty is unaffected, which is kind of amazing. You need a way to sacrifice it. Bargain cards do that. Those are a relatively new addition to the format, so there might be something there. You can picture sacking this to beseech the mirror, exiling this, getting an extra turn. You go get Karn with beseech the mirror. You minus the Karn, you get back the Nexus. You play the Nexus during your extra turn. You find another way to beseech it or sacrifice it or put it in the graveyard and you minus the Karn to get it back again? I mean, I guess that's a way to take some turns, but eh, it's, well, it seems a bit far-fetched to me, but it is an extra turn card. I think in Historic Brawl, the deck that might want this, maybe not because it already is a combo deck that wins pretty consistently, but I like Oswald Fiddlebender can sacrifice this to go get like the Immortal Sun. That's kind of gross. So yeah, maybe Oswald wants to run this card. We can test it in Oswald. So it, it says extra turn on it. It has some niche case scenarios. I've never seen this card in play. I've never seen this card actually grant an extra turn in all of the cons I played and watched. So I'm skeptical, but it's interesting. And then we come to the only rare lands in the set, which is kind of amazing to think about, but they, oh, that's all you need. Uh, Guys, if you do anything, if you have paid attention to nothing, if you want to ignore this entire set, but just want to do one thing, one thing, it should probably be to craft the fetch lands. Easily the most busted cards to come out of it. You get all of the friendly fetches. You get your bloodstained mire. You get your flooded strand. You get your polluted delta. You get your windswept heat. You get your wooded foothills. And you might be asking, CGB, I'm a magic zoomer. What is a fetch land and why is it good? To which I would say, no questions. Just do it. You'll figure it out very quickly. Okay, I will answer the question because this is a set review and it's kind of silly to not. But in case you didn't catch it, these can search for mountains or forest or swamp or mountain. It doesn't say basic, which means you can go get triumphs, which means you can go get dualies, uh, shock lands. You can go get prairie stream if that's what you want to get in standard. In the standard I played, like something that was very fun was figuring out the order to fetch things because you would want to fetch like a basic island and then a basic mountain and then you fetch a prairie stream with a polluted delta. So don't keep in mind also, I think that something if you've never played with these that you might miss, this is probably important to mention. These have no color identity. They have no mana symbol on them. So in Commander and Historic Brawl, now that they're here, you can run a Wooded Foothills, uh, a definitely red-green thematic fetch land in a deck that is, say, blue and black. Why would you do that? I don't know, but you could. Uh, but it does make a lot of sense to run, quote, off-color fetches in places where they could fetch a land that is... Uh, like a dual land that is useful. So if your deck is red and green, you would want to run Windswept Heath because you could go get a Cinder Glade or a Stomping Ground with it. You would want to run uh, a Bloodstained Mire. Be even though you don't have black, you would want to use this to go get those cards. So, yep, Historic Brawl. Run off-color fetches as long as they can still go get the lands you need. It'll be very fun to see them kind of doing 
uh, a, a good fable passage impression. Obviously, like these two go in Azusa, right? You want to put lands in your graveyard. The Gitrog monster is going to run uh, Polluted Delta, Wooded Foothills, Windswept Heath, and Bloodstained Mire. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, fetch lands are here, guys. Fetch lands have a unique history in Magic. Like they're banned in Pioneer because they didn't want like the shuffle the every turn shuffle pattern because we have modern for that where every turn we're shuffling for fetch lands in paper that does kind of bog down coverage and the game it's it's an acquired taste but man guys fetch lands were meant meant for magic arena they really were they really really were because you don't have to shuffle it's perfect play it crack it Get amazing lands out of your deck so that your mana runs very, very well and smooth. You take some damage. You make up for it with raw efficiency. It's a beautiful card. It's wonderful to have the fetch lands on Magic Arena. And I can't wait till we get the next cycle. When will we get the next cycle? So Modern Horizons 2 had enemy fetches. That's what it's called, the other cycle. Like Misty Rainforest is, is one of them. Right? Modern Horizons 2 had enemy fetches. Modern Horizons 2, to our knowledge, is not coming to Arena, although they might actually... I bet they do that. I bet Modern Horizons 2 does come to Arena. I bet that's what they're doing. I bet their next... It's not remastered set anymore, but I bet, I bet the next old school set they're going to put on here is Modern Horizons 2. That's my guess. Because Modern Horizons 3 has been announced as coming to Arena. It comes out in the summer of 2024. And because they just had enemy fetches in Modern Horizons 2, I don't think they'll have them in Modern Horizons 3. So I think that that's what's going to happen. I think either by December of next year or over the summer, I think we'll get Modern Horizons 2 on Arena timeless legal historic brawl legal and that's where we'll get enemy fetches to complete the fetch land cycle that's my prediction that is my guess i don't know anything that is just me hoping and then we will all hogak each other yeah i can't wait for hogak Hogak Summer 2.0 in 2024 hogak on timeless let's go Anyway, thank you for watching this set review. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Go enjoy some Timeless. Go enjoy some Historic Brawl with Fetchlands. Go enjoy some Pioneer if that's your jam. You're cool.